Today's card project is a simple, elegant thinking of you card, and I'm so excited to be sharing it with you today. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I've got some really sweet products from Hero Arts, a beautiful stencil and a beautiful stamp set, and I'm going to combine them to create a lovely, elegant, thinking of you card. It's very simple and I love using a stencil to add on just a very simple blend. Wait till you see the pattern, it's just gorgeous. That card project is coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using today and I'm very excited to be working with Hero Arts products and this stencil is absolutely gorgeous. This is the leaf and floral stencil and I'm going to use this to create a really pretty soft background for my card. Then I also have this set. This is floral imprints, and I'm going to do just some silhouette type of stamp stamping, um, but also this has all of the dies that comes with the stamps, so you can cut out the small greetings, whatever florals you like, and I think that is gorgeous. I've got some really cool toned inks that I'm going to be using today. I've got my blender brushes set up here, so let's get started with adding a pretty background to my card panel. Before I get started, today I'm going to use my stick and stamp mat, which I think is really fun to use with stencils. And you know, I get use out of this thing, right? So I'm gonna take this off, a little protective piece. But because this slides, it hurts my wrists um, to, use, to use it this way. So I'm gonna put a piece of the Tim Holtz Grip Media Mat and when I do that, it really does let me just put this in place and then it doesn't move. So if you work on a glass mat, and I really do love the glass mat that I'm working on right now, it's kind of kind of been a fun discovery. And uh, I also have a, well, I have a discount code that you can use if you want to check out one of these glass mats. I think they're very cool. Now, I'm going to press this down onto the stick and stamp mat. And of course, it will hold it decently well. And then I'm just going to bring in my stencil itself, you know, just kind of just kind of line it up so that it covers most of this area and press. Now, I am going to add a little tape because I'm a bit of an over adhesor, right? That's kind of my thing. Even though the stencil mat does hold, this one is losing a bit of its stick. So I am going to just, you know, just let it be, okay? Now we're gonna start with our blue, and this is Seafoam from Simon Says Stamp. And let me grab my brush. I'm just going to wipe this down a bit because I really don't know what I was using last. I almost never wash my brushes anymore. I just do this. I'm gonna load up my brush. And I think I'm just going to start kind of at the top here. Because what I wanna do is I do want to have a transition of the three colors, but I don't want this to go edge to edge. I don't think. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes once we get going. I'm trying to create just a nice little area for this panel. So I'm not going super dark, right? And I'm also going in both directions, but kind of working gently because the stencil has a lot of little pretty little swoops and swirls and details and I don't want to go too heavy so that I go underneath some of them but I'm just I'm going to start there. Next I'm going to bring in the lilac like that and again I've got my purple brush here. I just keep a brush for each color family when I'm using just dye based inks which is most of my inks right? I mean, unless I'm using oxides, I have a separate set of brush for my oxides. I'm actually gonna slide that up. And now we're just gonna come in here and do a little overlap where that blue is. And I am using a very light hand, okay? We don't wanna go down too hard with this color because we're just, you know, we're just making something pretty. And I may change my mind. I may go in and blend out more, I don't know. I have not decided, but I kind of want this to come this way a little bit. I think that's going to be kind of cool. And look at when it overlaps, you get this little color transition. And I love that switch directions. 
All right, that looks pretty good. And the final color is Heather. So this has more of a, I don't know, sort of a purpley blue tone. And I'm gonna pick that up. And again, just kind of lightly start, overlap like that, and bring it out and down. And then we'll see what it looks like. You know, this is, this is so easy to do with any really elaborate stencil. You can, you know, just kind of make a blob of blended color. You know, pick three colors that won't go in rainbow order and you know that your blend is going to work, right? You don't want to jump the rainbow and try to blend colors that don't go together, but these ones will. And I didn't need to really clean my brush off because we are just blending into this little purple. And then again, soft on the edges. And I think I'm ready to see what I got. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm kind of excited, actually. Let me deepen a little bit in that center there, just so that that looks a little bluer. I like that. Okay. Now we peel and reveal. And I think this is going to be absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love how this looks. Now what I'm going to do is take my brush and whatever's left on the brush, I'm just going to lightly go over where the blue is to make it a little less stark. Now there's not much on the brush, so this is really, really soft. Okay. I'm keeping it more in the center here of the image, right? Just going over that. See how that softens it up a little? And again, coming up from the bottom like this, but not going out into the boundary. We're just, we're just staying in there nice and soft. The thing that I love about this is it's going to be different every time you do it. You always have you know, a little different pressure on your hand. And it's just, it's just such a fun way to make a pretty background. So I'm going to set this aside and move on to stamping my image and my greeting. Actually, I should show you how easy it is. You just roll to remove, just roll it. <laughs> that was aggressive and lift it like that. So that is the panel. So any of these blooms would be beautiful. I think I am going to take this one here and pop it here. And I'm going to pick this up with my misty door. Oh, my misty's a little dirty. There's a lot of anti-static powder in there. I'm going to prep it a little just by running my hand over this because it's brand new. Of course, photopolymer gets more conditioned over time. But if you ever had where you stamp your ink down when you first get the stamp and it beads up and you think, what's happening? It just has a coating from the manufacturing washout process. So now we're good to go. But I thought for fun, I would use my VersaFine Claire pad. I love this pad. It is so great for getting really inky, dark uh, images, but just know you do have to let it dry. So I won't be die cutting this right away. I will ink this up. But we can work on the other part of this card while this dries. Okay, I'm gonna bring that down, make sure that's in the corner, and grab my stamp bug, my stampin' bug, and transfer the ink. Now sometimes, even with a new stamp, this stamps so well. Oh, I kind of missed a part there. <clears throat> Get in there, like that. Actually, that looks pretty good, although I am gonna do this one more time. This does give you a really crisp image too. And I kind of love that. And the beautiful thing is with a Misty, you can stamp it as many times as you need to, to get a great impression. All right, I'm going to take that out and set that aside. I also wanted to show you something that I just got that I think is so cool. I'm going to wipe this off. And usually it'll come off pretty well, but look what I just got. I got the Hero Arts Scrubber Block. And here you can take some ultra clean type spray. This, this is the spray from Simon. If you're, especially with pigment ink, if your stamp doesn't come completely clean 
and you can just scrub it. Look at all look at all the ink that came off of that. That is crazy. It looked clean, but it wasn't. And now it is. I think this I <laughs> I don't know how I've lived without this. I think this is awesome. All right. But I am going to be stamping my greeting, so let's prepare to do that. I'm going to use thinking of you for my greeting cuz I think this would make a really nice sympathy card or a support card for someone going through a rough time. I just like the soft, serene colors of the blues and purples. So we're going to pick this up and again, kind of prime that a bit. And I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. This is from Tailored Expressions and just pop, you just pounce it down and it adds a nice layer of powder, which I do get it all over my Misty. And this just helps for when I stamp this down and I add my embossing powder, the embossing powder will only stick where the Versamark is. So today I'm gonna use one of the first powders I ever got. This is the Hero Arts Gold. I think Hero Arts was one of the very first stamp companies back when I was a scrapbooker that I knew about. I had alphabets by them and when I was trying so hard to be a stamper, and I do have some old classic ones somewhere. We're gonna do two layers of the Versamark. And go like that, press to transfer. Now I'm going to grab my paper catch. Sometimes I just leave it in the Misty until I'm set up because it's, you know, it's not gonna hurt anything. And I'm gonna open this up, pick this out, right? And I can see that on there, so that's good. Um, I could just go like that. That would literally clean it off because I still have a cleaner on there. I'll put that away later. And let's add our powder. I did this for a while when I was storing <laughs> in my Alex unit so that I could see what my powders look like. And I was very proud of that organization. But then I got lazy and I stopped doing it. All right. It's looking good. I have um, lotion on my hands before I started filming, which probably wasn't good because I I was handling the paper far too much. Okay, put all that back in. And close that up. Also, if I'm using gold powder, I usually will wipe my catch down. You know, any powder other than clear, I, I basically, I also use my Swiffer cloth, which has seen its better day. I'm going to take one of my little angled shader brushes and just brush away any extra powder that stuck. I got a little in there because of my lotion. I feel like, yeah, I was handling my cardstock too much, but this is great. These little brushes, you just have to be careful, right, around the letter forms, but they're, they're firm, firmer than a, you know, a flouncy brush. So they're perfect for brushing away extra powder. I'm going to warm up my heat tool and we'll melt the powder. Ooh, that's beautiful. What a gorgeous, look at that shine. Fine detail, holds the shape of the greeting. All right, and I will show you now, this is also looking pretty, pretty dry, but you could always, if you wanna facilitate pigment ink, my little uh, heat tool does have a lower setting. And you can also just go over that lightly if you want to just make sure it's set. All right, let me grab the coordinating dies. I'm gonna cut my dies apart here with my little beadalon snips, and that will allow me to separate them. I actually want to try the hero snips, and I was going to buy them, and they were out of stock, so I gotta, I gotta follow up on that. Get on the, get on the waiting list. All right, that can be set aside. And we'll get these guys cut out and proceed. I've got these positioned and I will go ahead and run these through my die cut machine. And let's see 
how we did. Pretty sure this one is dry. Isn't that elegant? Oh, so pretty. And I just wanna pop you out like that. Now, I had a thought as I was doing this because this could actually be really cute um, on black cardstock with gold. I may, I may actually do that as I was looking at it because I wanted to have sort of some synergy of this with the black and the black. So I might do one more off camera just so we have a couple choices. Okay, Franklin, you can't be in the video. Come on, come on, little blooper. Okay, I think having it be in black is gonna be more cohesive, but let's see, let's get the card started, the build started, and then we'll decide. I'm going to take one of my A2 layers dies and cut a panel to incorporate most of the design, but you can see how soft it is on the edge. Because what I'm going to do then is pop up this in the center, right? I think that's pretty. I think that's gonna be really nice. So I will do that. And again, just incorporating the blend, top and bottom, side to side, and get a nice panel trimmed down. I'll go ahead and cut that out. I actually think black cardstock will be a really elegant way to finish this out. So I'm going to take, this is Onyx from Spellbinders, and I'm just going to score it at five and a half. Fold that down and give that a nice press. I think just having that little bit of repetition with the florals and then just having, thinking of you floating on the wreath. I mean, I suppose I could have it down more. You know, that might give it more contrast and perhaps, you know what, I might do that. If I do, I need to take some of this foam off the center area. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will do that. All right, let's take you off like that. Very easy to just roll those back once you've used them. And I will put some of this, I don't think I can reuse it though. Yeah, no, just gets a little too sticky. But I can take little friends off here, pop that on the end and pop that on the end. So I think that will work. Let's make sure, let's get this popped down first. I've just got three strips of foam tape on the back. This is foam tape from Ulta New. You know what, I might have to double up some of that foam. I think I used the wrong depth of foam square. So let me let me double this up just a little so that it can, I should have used the Alta New, but let me go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll glue these on. All right, I've placed my elements down and that that is looking pretty nice. I think I wasn't filming, but hey, at least you got a little bit of a cat. I think I might add some gold. So let me place some sequins and see how they look. I'm just going to finish it off with three areas of two sequins. I think this will be a nice way to just add a little reinforcing gold to kind of pick up from boop, where the title is. Boop, or greeting, I guess in, I guess in card making, we call them greetings, right? I was kind of in my scrapbooking mentality here, like that, and over here. So they're even gatherings of two, but in thirds. Boop. So we get a little visual triangle connecting. And that is the finished card project. Really like how this turned out. It's simple, it's understated, you get that pretty background blend. And using a stencil like this with a general sort of floral and leaf design, it's really nice for pretty much any kind of card you're going to create. And of course, you mix up the colors and you get a totally different look every time. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find links to all the supplies I used for today's card project in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, I would love to have you, so hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more clean and simple designs with stencil grounding as the base for the design, check out the two thumbnails I have linked below, and I will see you in those videos.